All right, for this presentation, we're going to be talking about the marketing plan, and we're also going to be talking about some of the main concerns that you should have when you're putting together this marketing plan. Um, the thing about marketing is that most people believe that it's simply advertising. It's putting together whether you want a television ad, a radio ad, a newspaper ad, I mean, they see it all as advertising. There's a quite a bit that you have to do ahead of time before you get to that stage, though, or else you're just wasting your time. Either you're going to be sending out ads to the wrong people, to the wrong medium, a whole bunch of things. We'll get to that. So, the written plan. Uh, things you should be expecting to have in there. We'll talk about this in more detail. But a general overview. Specific details about your target market. Don't worry about that yet. We'll talk about how to come up with that. Present and near future situation, including your competitors. So this is where you would go through and say, here is who our competitors are, both direct and indirect and say here's where we are right now as a company, where we are right now with our competition, and what we can foresee in the near future. You're not going to be able to tell me much about what's going to happen 10 years from now, but you can tell me pretty well what's going to happen in the next six months. Identify your differential advantage, which we will define, and you may include financial projections. We will not go over financial projections here, but loosely you're talking about how much money could you make if you were to meet your sales forecasts. Okay, so your differential advantage. Uh, if you think about a competitive advantage, you're pretty close. The characteristic that separates one company from another in this is the marketing mix, product, price, promotion, and or distribution. Okay, so what is it that makes your company different? If you cannot answer that, you're not really ready to make a marketing plan <laughs> because you're going to be saying what amounts to we are the same as everybody else, please come spend your money here, instead of saying, we are the best at, and then fill in the blanks, okay? Uh, this is your competitive advantage in marketing speak. All right, what do you do differently? What do you do better? Why are they coming to you instead of the competitors that you have just been talking about? So, you have discuss your target market. This is the general you know, makeup of your marketing plan, and realize this is a general market, uh, plan here. Explain your current situation. Okay, This would be where you talk about how much of the industry you already have captured, what's your market share, uh, what do you already have out there, how is it being received, how is this product comparing to others. I mean, this is, and it would be a very direct and frank discussion of your current situation. There's no reason to lie to yourself about how your product is going. If your product is good but it hasn't really been noticed yet, put it in there in detail saying, here's how we know it hasn't been noticed. We put it out, these different locations, they're not buying, we're hearing this back from vendors, we're hearing this back from customers, this is what they're saying to our employees, rather they're trying to sell it, whatever you have. Okay. Then talk about your marketing strategy and objectives. Somewhere in here, with your strategy, would be where you talk about your advertising, and say, this is what we plan to do, this is what we plan to not do, etc. Uh, then your product, promotion, price, and place. Four P's. All right, your target market. The here's where most people starting out with their first business mess up. All right, this is one of those places that just everyone does it because they come up with a new product. All right, let's call it a new cell phone. All right, just for a jolly. It's not that we really want to compete with Samsung and Apple, but let's say that that's what happened. All right, so who are we going to market it to? Well, the new entrepreneur will say. Well, everybody. I mean, who, who needs a cell phone? Everyone needs a cell phone. So we're just going to market it to everybody. Well, there's some really, really big problems with that philosophy. Number one, your particular cell phone is not likely to appeal to everyone. In fact, it's pretty much guaranteed not to appeal to every single person in the market. Number two, you are not unlimitedly resourced. Okay. You do not have all the money in the world, which is about how much it takes to market to everyone, is about all the money in the world. So, you're going to have to make some decisions. Number one, for just pure efficiency's sake. Number two, because your resources are not unlimited. So, we need to divide the market into groups. We call this market segmentation. You'd also call it the quest for your target market. Uh, you'll end up with the same thing. So, you divide the, product, the market into groups that have somewhat homogeneous needs for product or service. Some of the easy ways to do this, well, back up. The way to think about this is you're putting the entire population of whatever 
geographic you're looking at. It could be the entire world if you want to go international. Um, put the entire population and try and put it through a funnel. <laughs> okay, so think about massive upside down pyramid where he's putting all the people in at one side and it's getting narrower and narrower as you go down. Okay, so first things you're going to do. What if you're talking about marketing a new cell phone? How are you going to start to segment this? Well, do you really think you're going to be marketing cell phones to those under 14 or above the age of, say, 80? Well, not likely. The under 14 is more likely than above 80. But let's just, for simplicity's sake, say we're not going to do that. In fact, let's narrow it down even further and say that you are looking for the 16 to 30 crowd. Okay. Now picture the funnel, the great big at the top, and the starting to narrow down a little bit. Now you've narrowed your focus to the 16 to 30s. All right, you're catching the college students, the newly, prof you know, newly careered professionals, uh, a lot of the early adopters here. So probably okay type cell phone. Um, as you move through that, you're going to say, okay, 16 through 30, do you want male or female? If you truly believe there is no difference between the two and you don't want to change your marketing at all, you'll say, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. Your funnel stays the same size. What's more likely to happen is you're going to say, you know what, if it's 16 to 30, Let's talk about one type of marketing for the women, one type of marketing for men. If you're going to do that, then you now have two funnels. But let's say that you decide to focus on men. Let's say that for creativity's sake, you're talking about a cell phone that is literally indestructible and has all types of gadgets like a bottle opener and a screwdriver and can be used as a hammer and a pinch. I mean, this thing is indestructible. And you figure men would like that better than women. Uh, so we're going to market to men, just for fun. Well, you split your demographics in half. You went from a great big funnel, you dropped it because of age, and now we've dropped it even smaller by choosing a gender that we're going to market to, and that we're going to focus on. Next, we're going to look at something like how much money do they make. If we have a new cell phone, it's going to cost $1,000. Do we need to now split it up a little bit and figure out who can afford it? Yeah, because the really, really poor are not going to be able to afford a $1,000 cell phone. So we have to now change it based on another demographic, which would be the amount of income. We might also, if it's something that is highly technical, have to you know, differentiate it based on their adopting schedule. Are they an early majority, an early adopter? What if they require a degree in engineering to run the cell phone? Well, now you can see where we narrowed it down to where we have people 16 through 30, male, uh, greater than $100,000 of income per year, a uh, college degree in engineering. Um, well, now we've narrowed it down, haven't we? We might even narrow it further to say that if we're starting this company in Utah, that the western United States is really the only place that we're interested in to start out. So now we're going to limit it even further geographically and say only if you're in the western United States. Well, we just went from the entire population of the, at least the country, and we've narrowed it down to that particular target market. That is market segmentation. We take it all the way down and say, okay, if we're looking at that one, the male, eight, you know, 16 through 30, blah, 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 this is how we're going to market to them. Now, it doesn't mean that we're not going to have another product or another marketing plan that would go towards hitting the female market, um, 18 through 40 who live in the eastern United States. But that's going to be a different venture. It's going to be a different set of ads, different set, different advertising strategy, a whole bunch of different things. Okay, But do not make the mistake of saying, I'll just market to everyone. It doesn't work for very many products. Usually people just go broke trying to have an undifferentiated strategy. Okay, That's a target market. You should know it very, very well and be able to explain it. Now, talking about some differentiated strategy, here's an entire slide on it. Okay, No segmentation assumes all consumers have virtually identical needs and can be reached by the same marketing mix. That should make you chuckle a little bit to think of any group of people all having identical needs. Rarely. Okay, Even, I mean, the, in the U.S., even food. If you say, well, everyone has to eat. Yeah, but that does not mean that the same bag of flour is going to be marketed the same to everybody. 
Instead, you're going to have those, you know, all types of things. Do I have time to discuss all the different ways you can market food? So, this is one. There may be products that you can come up with that really could work for an undifferentiated strategy. It's not likely. So, instead, we should look at a strategy in which a marketer selects two or more distinct groups of consumers and designs specific marketing mixes to meet their needs. If we're talking about an indestructible cell phone, you could have male and female, if you believe that they, those two groups are different enough to warrant it. You could also have the 16 through 30 group, and then the 30 through 60 group. You do it by age, you do it by uh, geographics, have the Western United States and Eastern United States, if you think those two groups are different enough for this. But, generally, smart money is on a differentiated strategy where we say, I want to look at this particular target market and sell to them. Now the concentrated, one specific group of consumers, and you're designing a marketing mix specifically for that group. For our marketing plan, assignment, and business plan, stuff like that, you probably should focus on one specific group of consumers, just for length purposes. I'd rather see you do a very good job of addressing one target market than several very badly or very sparsely. Now, when you're talking about your competitors, remember in the marketing plan we are talking about our current situation which includes competitors. Remember that you have both direct and indirect competition. Uh, the example the slides have here, Coca-Cola, any other soft drink providers. Think Pepsi, think Shasta, think anybody who's making sodas. Okay, I don't know all the knockoff brands anymore, I don't really pay attention to them. But, in college I did, uh, <laughs> but these are direct competitors. People that, if they're looking at a display of your stuff, what what's right next to it, competing with you, they're either going to grab Pepsi or Coke. Those are your direct competitors. They're also the ones you're most likely to identify. To say, if I'm starting a barbershop, old-time barbershop, then the beauty salon across the street is my direct competitor. Okay? Now, Indirect comp competition is often overlooked, especially by new business owners, um, because we tend to think, and I've been in these conversations with people saying, it's the most wonderful product, everyone should want one, there's nobody else who makes anything like it. Well, that's a trap. That's a logic trap, because you say, yeah, no one else has had one like it, and yet the world has continued to spin without it. So nothing is truly so revolutionary that there is no in, at least indirect competition. Okay, Even if you come out with something just as revolutionary as the iPad. Well, how did we do things before the iPad? Well, we had computers, laptops, pads of paper that we'd write things on. We had calendars that hung up on the wall, clocks that hung up on the wall, and calculators that would fit in our pocket. Okay, There was indirect competition to the iPad, even though it was the most touted tablet that came out. So, do not think that you have no competition. You should be able to say, yeah, if they don't come and buy this from me, they would be able to this, this, and this to compensate for that. Knowing what those things are is a power in and of itself. Okay, Because if you don't know what those are, then you go into it arrogant. You go in saying, there's nothing like my product and everyone should want one. Well, then you come up with some really bad expectations. Plus, you might come off as arrogant in a marketing standpoint, which would be a really bad idea. So instead, you should understand your product, understand your com competition, both direct and indirect, and be able to tell me all about it if you're making a marketing plan. Okay, that is the end of this presentation. If you have questions, please contact me. I'd much rather answer questions about it before you turn it in, in an assignment that displays that you did not understand something about the marketing plan. Okay, thank you for watching this presentation. I hope you have a very good day.